If you're looking for a lithium-ion phosphate battery or if you just want to check out how this one is built inside, stick around because today I got a little bit of an unusual request from Wattcycle, the manufacturer of this battery. They've asked me if I would be interested in reviewing one of their batteries, nothing unusual so far, but they've also insisted on me taking it apart and showing how it's built inside. Usually manufacturers can be reluctant when opening their products on video and in the past I think I had one or two occasions where I had to simply refuse uh, receiving some products for review just because I didn't like the restrictions that the manufacturer was trying to impose. But not today, What Cycle specifically asked me to open this battery because apparently it can be opened with just a screwdriver but more on that later. First thing I want to talk about is shipping and packaging and they have several warehouses in China, EU, US, Canada region so in my case the battery was shipped uh, I think from an Amazon fulfillment warehouse in Germany it got here pretty fast and it comes in the usual thick cardboard box protected inside with foam padding and inside the package uh, you get two sets of M8 screws uh, for the battery terminals, there's a short set and a long uh, set of screws plus these uh, plastic caps and a set of user manuals uh, and I'll get to this later, these are really nice user manuals. Wattcycle even has a dedicated website for Ukraine and I would imagine they ship from Germany or Poland maybe to Ukraine. I would also imagine they sell quite a few of their batteries to Ukraine because of the often power outages that happen there whenever Russia targets their infrastructure. I've chosen this particular model for review. It's their 12 volts, 100 amp power, smart mini edition. And I thought given the specs of this one, it's the most useful to have here in the lab because I can universally use it to power or backup already existing 12 volt systems that I might come across. Like remember that time when I used the 50 amp hour lithium ion phosphate battery to start my VW TDI uh, that had a dead battery. Well this one at 100 amp hours would do an even better job because it would have a higher discharge current. The uh, smart part here you see here with the uh, Bluetooth icon means it has a Bluetooth capable smart BMS built inside which gives you Bluetooth connectivity and they do offer an app for both iOS and Android that you can install and you can use to view important parameters like voltage, current, cycle count, individual cell voltage, temperature and you can also have control over the output switch or turn on or off charging. And throughout this video I'll overlay the app screenshots on screen whenever it is relevant. In terms of specs for this particular 100 amp hour model we have a standard charging um, current of uh, 20 amps that's 0.5 C with maximum continuous discharge current of 100 amps so that's 1 C. All of this with a rating of 6000 cycles at the depth of discharge of 80% uh, which is great because normally you wouldn't run this below 80% DOD. It means you're getting a lot out of this battery. The enclosure itself is IP65 waterproof rated, it's made out of flame retardant ABS and this particular model weighs in 9.4 kilograms. Now imagine how much a lead acid 100 amp hour battery would weigh in comparison, probably like you know 30-40 kilos. You also get a nice wide carry strap uh, with the model but this can be removed if you wish to do so. The BMS offers various protections like overcurrent protection at 300 amps um, on uh, discharge and 130 amps on charging, over voltage protection, under voltage protection and temperature protection for charge and discharge which is uh, especially important for lithium ion phosphate, uh, they're uh, sensitive if you try to charge them for example under zero, zero degrees celsius so this BMS is set that to allow discharge between minus 20 and plus 70 degrees celsius and to allow charging between 0 and 65 degrees celsius. Again these are, these are fairly standard ratings in the battery industry and it's important to have these protections because if you try to charge the battery below 0 degrees celsius it will significantly degrade its chemistry while if you try to charge or discharge at higher than 65 degrees celsius again bad things can happen. Inside the user manual and on their website what cycle claims various 
IAC, FCC, ULC certifications for their uh, final battery pack as well as for the cells inside the product, but they don't give us any uh, report uh, IDs, any identification that we could use to cross-check that uh, those certifications have actually been obtained for this product. So until they can provide more details on these certifications, I can't actually believe uh, the certifications exist. In the user manual, they uh, mention a five-year warranty if you register the battery on their website. And yes, there is a long list of scenarios where the battery is not covered under warranty. But in my humble opinion, these are all very reasonable um, scenarios. And I would urge you to specifically pay attention to the uh, mention of insufficient charging. Uh, you should know that batteries you know, should be charged regularly to prevent over discharge at least at least i would say at least one once every six to twelve months uh, they uh, ask you to do it at least once per year here in the user manual and i very much like this uh, user manual it really gives you you know all of the information you could possibly want about this battery it's all in very clear Eng english uh, really nicely uh, made user manual it even gives you, you know, uh, wire thickness specification based on the uh, current capacity. It, it shows you how to connect the batteries in series or parallel. I must say this is one of the nicest user manuals I've seen shipped with a battery. And by the way, if you're looking to get one of these batteries or some other model from their lineup, please use the links I've placed in the description. They do carry a lot of different models on their website. And by using these links, you help support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything extra. On top of that, I would mention, especially concerning my US viewers, that WattCycle currently has stock in their warehouse, which is not affected by the new tariffs in place. But at some point, as new stock will come in, prices will likely go up. So now would be a good time to get one of these. What can I say? We live in a crazy world today with some very challenging problems. Now, it would be impossible for me to reasonably test the quoted cycle life. Just the amount of energy wasted doing that is, is crazy if you do the math. But I did test the uh, rated capacity by doing a 20 amp charge and a 20 amp discharge cycle. I used my KP184 electronic load for the discharge test and I made these uh, custom 10 AWG silicon uh, test leads for doing that. The electronic load was set to battery mode with remote sense and the end voltage was set to 9.2 volts according to the user manual. And five hours later, the result showed 101.8 amp hour recorded, which is over the quoted capacity by about 2%. Feels very uh, reasonable. My testing was performed in roughly 25 degrees ambient and I monitored temperatures external and internal using the um, uh, BMS as well as the uh, new Guide E2 Plus thermal camera. And everything looked normal. No temperature went over 35 degrees Celsius throughout the test, which is reassuring. And what Cycle mentions, they are using EV grade A plus lithium ion phosphate cells inside their batteries. So that's probably a confidence booster when they offer that five year warranty. And by putting good quality cells inside, you can expect that uh, high cycle count as long as the user follows the recommended operating conditions. And all this comes on top of the you know standard lithium ion phosphate advantages like it being inherently safer than uh, lithium polymer and lithium ion chemistries and offering inherently higher cycle counts and less wear over those. Uh, by the way, my battery came with a 40 to 50 percent charge, uh, which is ideal for storage and shipping. It had a zero count on the BMS cycle indicator. And now after you know, one and a half uh, charge uh, cycles and one full discharge cycle, uh, it does show a count of two cycles on the BMS screen. And now for the moment that I was waiting for the most, a teardown of this battery so we can check out the build quality. It looks like there are some screw covers located here on, on the edge of the top uh, cover 
there might be screws under these so I'm gonna try to take these caps off for a start so yeah there are screws under those uh, black caps but they're plastic they're fully inserted so they're really difficult to get out and I stab myself with the screwdriver in the process but now we should be able to get a better look at the inside Oops, so I see some thick cabling let me rearrange the camera to get a better look at this there are a few things which I immediately notice about the construction of the battery I noticed this really nice double walled uh, construction with an o-ring inserted here between the two walls and the top cover edge comes in to press on that o-ring to make a perfect seal we also notice metal threaded uh, inserts on the mounting holes for the six screws holding the top cover in place the next thing I notice is very short thick wiring for the output terminals this looks like uh, silicone uh, insulated wire and the on these uh, uh, black ones there's two of them and I see eight AWG rating on them because this is longer it probably made sense to put two uh, smaller diameter cables than one thicker one which would be required for the longer distance for the positive terminal this might be like a 6AWG wire I noticed the battery packs are strapped together using you know that type of welded plastic band this green thing which is often used for packaging goods for shipping it's cheap but effective on top we notice the big uh, BMS board and the optional Bluetooth module which I have on this particular model so I'm guessing they can decide it as a last step whether or not to equip a particular battery with the Bluetooth module to make it smart or just keep the standard uh, BMS that's very smart and efficient from a manufacturing point of view but I also notice a couple of things that I do not like in here uh, here is where a little bit of more attention to detail would be nice to have so it appears that this BMS has two external thermistors which are connected through these two sets of wires uh, but watch how both of these thermistors are glued in a single spot right here so this basically would cancel out the capability of sensing uh, temperature in two different spots unless they're not supposed to sense two different spots but instead work as backup if one fails still have the what other one reporting so i'm not really sure what's going on here uh, my assumption would be that you want you would want to sense you know top and bottom temperature and the second thing i don't like is the way the bms is mounted using a set of zip ties to the green welded plastic strap holding the battery pack together i mean a little bit of attention to detail here in the enclosure design maybe and you could have had you know a, a couple of uh, mounting points maybe on this top cover on the positive side they are using this thick block of uh, foam to prevent the BMS from ever uh, rattling inside because this is being kept pressed by the top cover now let me try and see if I can slide out this entire battery pack so we can get a better look at it I was able to slide the pack out of the case fairly easy after uh, inserting these um, couple of these flat wires under the welded plastic straps and I just used these as handles to pull on the battery pack and then it was fairly easy to slide out of the enclosure again we see foam padding to keep it firmly in place and a general clean construction there are four individual battery packs inside there is some insulation between each of the cells again some plastic insulators on the outside so the uh, you know the welded uh, green straps don't put pressure directly on the individual cells on the electrical connection side it looks really nice we notice the voltage sensing wires for the individual cells then heavy solid jumper links for the high current and they're not soldered they're not screwed in it looks like there's welding but I haven't seen this type of welding before it looks perfect and high quality and I wonder what the machine that does this type of welding on these battery packs looks like is it like it doesn't look to be like spot welding it might be ultrasonic welding uh, let me know in the comments if you know more about this type of welding I'm not going to take the uh, BMS further apart because I don't think there's anything too interesting to see in between those two plates uh, but through the openings and by looking at the wiring they're doing low side current sensing 
a huge number of parallel shunt resistors uh, I can see here and that is to get to the desired or should I say the needed power rating for the given current. So if I would have to sum this uh, third down I would say all the critical electrical connections are nicely done including welding on the battery terminals themselves. Uh, there's uh, you know screw mounting with silicone for the voltage sensing of the individual cells and uh, really nice thick uh, silicone wiring for the main um, output terminals. The battery pack is tightly packed together. Um, there's an O-ring on the enclosure to keep water and dust out of the enclosure. The only thing I would complain about in here is the way the BMS is attached using the, uh, the zip ties. Uh, but given the way the whole thing goes together very tightly with these foam blocks, uh, it is unlikely that something will come apart, but still not impossible. So I would like to see some improvements on that area. I've got the unit back together and I'll probably uh, search for some uh, replacement small rubber caps to seal the screw holes back up because these plastic ones got damaged when I removed them or I'll probably just resort to some black uh, celastic. This particular model that I, I have here as mentioned in the start of this uh, review includes a Bluetooth capable BMS which means you get a, uh, a mobile app that you can install for both Android and iOS and you can connect to the BMS and you get some, some basic uh, functionality out of that but there is two things that I'd like to point out. Uh, first is a word of caution about the QR codes in the user manual because instead of just redirecting you to the App Store for iOS devices or the Play Store for Android devices, it takes you to a website which looks kind of sketchy and then appears to be downloading something that to me doesn't look right because apps should be installed through the official App Store and what cycle uh, should fix this? They should just redirect the user to the App Store on the QR code. And then there is another aspect that should be discussed regarding uh, security these days. So if you get one of these smart batteries, anyone can install the app and connect to your battery. The security is only guaranteed by the limited range of Bluetooth because otherwise anyone within range can connect to your battery and disable or enable charging or the discharging function as long as they know the standard password which is uh, 6 eighths. That's not very good security if you ask me so I'll be sending this feedback to Wattcycle in the hopes that they can uh, improve it going forward but the bottom line is is that if you're concerned about security you would just get the standard version and not have Bluetooth installed at all or you can get the Bluetooth version if that's the only one that's available in stock you can just remove the top cover and unplug the Bluetooth module. And now to give you my final thoughts on this unit, I think the battery is great quality, especially given the cost and the fact that it is available more or less locally. It meets battery capacity spec, the BMS functionality with the bonus Bluetooth connection is very nice and it includes comprehensive protection features. However, they could do better in the future with the way the BMS is mechanically mounted on the inside and the concerning security aspect over Bluetooth. But if security is a concern, you can just get the standard version to remove the risk altogether. So if you're in the market for a lithium-ion phosphate battery pack, I think you should definitely consider what cycle. They make pretty decent batteries, especially given the cost. Links will be provided in the description below, so do check them out as they help support the channel. I would also be interested in hearing your experience with lithium-ion phosphate packs. Maybe you're already running a watt cycle or a different brand or maybe even a DIY pack. Have you checked the build quality on your particular battery? Is it better or worse than what I showed in this video? Let me know in the comments below. That was all for today. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.